Thank you for joining us. My name is Jay Clifford, a developer advocate to Influx Data. I'm here with Evan Kaplan, our CEO. Thank you for joining us, Evan. It is an honor. Yeah, great to be here, Jay. Fantastic. So I'm really excited about this next subject. We're going to cover the broad topic of AI. I mean, it's been an incredible year, right, for, for AI. Um, I just kind of wanted to sort of gauge what you how you feel AI is evolving in, in the industry at the moment and, and give sort of give your views on where things are going in, in the AI space. Yeah, it's a great it's a great question. What's interesting to me as it relates to, you know, particularly my role is not so much the LLM models, you know, the language specific stuff, but more what I would call the real world AI, you know, what makes a self-driving car, what makes a robotic, what makes a machine, what makes what makes things in the physical world um, smarter, more effective, more autonomous. I love that. And and so sort of sort of capitalizing on that when we talk about like the real world and we talk about these like, autonomous cars, you know, they're all producing time series data. Um, and, you know, we're leveraging that at the moment, storing all that in an influx DB. So where do you see time series playing a role with AI? And more importantly, what do you think the impact will be on influx DB? How will we sort of, are we going to jump on this bandwagon? How's, how's it going to work for us? You know, it's, it's interesting you use the term jump on the bandwagon. I, I don't, that may not even be applicable now. I don't, yeah. think, I don't think you cannot be on this bandwagon. There used to be a term like um, I would IoT wash something, I would sustainability wash something, where I just throw some terms out. But I do think, I do agree with, with some of the pundits who articulate that all software is AI going forward and that you can't. It's not something you can ignore. It's also not something you can lightly wash over. In terms of where we fit in that world, I have a pretty clear view of, of where we fit and what we're building for. Is I view us much, much, much like you would have viewed pickaxes and shovels during the gold rush, is we're foundational, um, right? We don't necessarily develop AI models ourselves. The experts in specific fields who understand them, who know how to build those models, the foundation models, they do that work, right? But we're foundational to that. And let me step back a little bit, even before we talk about AI, right? We're on a journey in the compute world for smarter and smarter systems, both in the physical and the virtual world. And smarter systems are really, it's a pretty easy pattern to see how you get there. Right, you start with you instrument something, mm -hmm. right? Then you watch its behavior, right? Then you correct for the anomalies, right? Then you watch its behavior again, then you correct for the anomalies, until you know if you do that four billion times, you end up with a self-driving car. If you do it four hundred times, you ended up with a smarter observability system and software. If you but you get the journey, right? It's a constant learning journey where instrumentation is foundational. What time series is in that equation is instrumentation. Because what you're trying to do with AI, right? You're trying to say, what happened? What happened? What happened? What's going to happen? Mm -hmm. What could happen? What are the probabilities of things happening? But nothing, nothing in that world makes sense if you can't collect what happened at scale with big data sets in efficient ways. And I think that's where that's our role in that. It's you know, it may not be the exciting headline role, but it's a role we feel really comfortable executing against. So we're really providing that foundational, that bedrock layer where people have that real time data. That's the the, the analytics that they want to create, and they can, they they basically allow people to stand on giants and build their own AI solutions on top. Yeah, I'd like to think of it standing on giant, but it doesn't have to be real time. It can be long term stored data to build your models, but you want to act in real time. That's where our stuff becomes also particularly useful. So when we talk about InfluxDB 3.0, we think about, um, we're looking to be joining that sort of real-time analytics space. Um, could you give me sort of an idea of where we hope to be with InfluxDB and real-time analytics? What role are we going to play there? You know, are we, are we going to be more like a data warehouse, data lake, or you know, are we going to be working with these technologies? What's the idea? It's a great question. It's great. So first of all, I wouldn't view it as joining. Uh, we've been in this space for for the for the beginning. We've been optimized for individual time series, collecting data on individual measurements, things like that. The thing that's most exciting about the three dot stuff is how good we are across large sets of data over periods of time, 
and how increasingly better we are. And it's based on the new architecture, which we can talk about separately. And so um, our view is, is that the real-time analytics stuff is core to is core to really understanding the AI, to building foundational models, to understand those dynamic, but also really important to building more sophisticated control systems, which I think are at the core of that. So yeah, I do view us as foundational in that space too. And so, and they, they almost play in tangent AI, real-time analytics. The, the the fact that we have the ability to ingest in real-time and work with data in real-time feeds these models and allows right. us to make real-time decisions in right. that area. Right, and build for that. We try to build for that, so. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Evan, for your time. It's been brilliant as always. Um, thank you all for joining us once again. This is Influx Data. We're really excited to see what you build with InfluxDB.